Hi, Greg Vitesnik from Vitesnik Power Sports. Um, this is going to be a uh, Regency orientation, uh, one of four videos that we are um, about to present. Um, the, the first video is going to be the um, helm oper uh, switch operations and all the functions that we have uh, and all the options that we have on our helm. So I'm going to start with with um, our master power switch, which is the first switch on the left. That, okay, so the, the first switch that I wanna discuss is our master power switch. This switch has to be on for all of these switches here to work. So the nice thing about that at the end of the day when you're all done um, using your boat, uh, make sure that switch is off and, um, and uh, you won't have any uh, battery drainage from a switch being left on. So the next switch here, if you're equipped with a 150 horse motor, it's a power steering override. So this will change how easy the steering uh, operates. We have a courtesy light. Now this is a 230 LE. So on the LE, we have lighted cup holders and speakers along with uh, uh, floor lighting. Um, we have a canopy light, which Behind me is our uh, covered bimini top, but underneath that Regency bimini top cover is two lights that shine down uh, in, into the um, boat area. We have the next switch is docking lights. So those are on the front of the boat next to our navigation lights. And uh, those are to be used only for, for docking, not when you're um, navigating. Uh, we have some outside lights on the LE. The DL does not have that, but the LE has it. They're just some lights that are underwater uh, on the backside of, of the pontoons. And then we have our nav lights. So this is a three position switch or a three uh, function switch. So the first time you push it, when the blue light is lit, you'll have your navigation light and your anchor light that's, that's located um, on the bimini top and back. I press it again and that will be just your anchor light. So if you're out uh, watching fireworks or anchored out at night, you are to have that light on uh, only. And then you press it one more time and it's off. On the LE and the LE Sport, we have storage lights. So all of your uh, seat compartments and your, and your um, center pontoon has lights in it. The switch after that is a bilge pump which is also has a float on it, so it is automatic. So under the floor in the center pontoon is a bilge pump. And then our last switch uh, on the helm is, is our horn. Also on this boat, because it is an LE or an LE Sport, they have an electric bimini top, and those buttons are located here, so either up or down. To raise the bimini, um, you need to you need to it, it's in a um, it's in a in a usable position at this point, and um, if you wanted to um, deploy the bimini top, you need to set it down on the rail, take the bimini boot off, and then you can raise the bimini. Um, other thing I'd like to show you is. We have, um, on this boat, it's equipped with a, with a 150, so we have our standard um, throttle control. With this throttle control, we've got the ability to advance the throttle without shifting by pushing this bottom button in. And then, of course, like all um, throttle controls, we have uh, trim up and down, which will adjust your, uh, your motor when you're your underway. boat is equipped with a 200 horsepower engine or larger, they will have this digital throttle, the DTS system, um, which has its own manual as well. But some of the things that I like to point out is of course you still have your trim up and down, but some of the unique things are we have, we have a throttle only function. So if you needed to advance the throttle without shifting, you would push this in from the neutral position. You would push the throttle only, and then when you advance the throttle, it would just rev the engine instead of shift it. And then the other nice feature that it has is this docking mode, which is nice for exactly what, what, it's, what it says, for docking or putting it on a trailer. When you have this button pushed in, your throttle response will be reduced by about 50%. We have a light. Um, this is illuminated. You can increase the, the intensity of the light by this button. And then you also have this transfer button 
that is if you were, uh, had a boat with dual helms. This would be something you would never use on a Regency boat. Got to stop here, but simply turning the key off and on here is, is all that's needed to be done. We have a tilt wheel helm. We also have our Smartcraft gauges and our Lowrance gauge. So um, I'm going to turn that on. I'm going to also turn the key on to show the functions of the Smartcraft gauges first. So of course they go through a self-check and then they will show you voltage and engine hours. I press this mode button, I can see fuel percentage to empty. Um, this is engine temperature and trailer, uh, you know, engine position, um, engine RPMs. Come over to this gauge, it gives us gallons per hour. Um, it gives you uh, miles per hour, both analog and digitally, and <clears throat> outside temperature, and then fuel to uh, percentage to zero. Of course, when it's full, it'll be 100%. When it's empty, it'll be zero. The other thing that we have on a Regency is we have an HD7 uh, touchscreen graph. And uh, I'm just going to go over a few things on that. Basically, here's our, here's our power switch right here. We can, we can turn it on. Um, we were able to edit the overlays. We, we put in depth, speed over ground, and water temperature. Um, we have multiple pages or functions of this graph. And if you press this page button, it gives us the ability to be in the chart, which it just was in, or sonar uh, structure. Um, the other interesting or, or the other nice features it has is an actual uh, rear-facing camera for um, watching skiers, um, which you still need a spotter, but um, it does help you, um, the, the, the driver, uh, have some vis visibility there. Again, press the page button. I can go back to chart, and this is inside the building, so it's not showing us where it is, but it will find your lake and, and show you where you're at and give you a track of where you have been. To turn that off, you can simply turn off the master power and it will turn off. And it also comes with, with a cover when you're done using it for the day that you can set on there. Um, we've got a 12 volt, got a couple 12 volt outlets, cell phone holder, and of course radio, um, which the power button is this is this top button here at the one o'clock position. So it is a Bluetooth capable radio. So you are able to Bluetooth. Well, you gotta have the master switch on. You are able to Bluetooth your phone and uh, play your music. Um, I also want, I want you to know where all of our fuses are. So I'm gonna, So in this compartment, here's our main radio control. So if you want to adjust balance from speakers front to rear, you have a lot more uh, functionality here on the actual radio head. <clears throat> Fire extinguisher uh, standard on a Regency pontoon boat. That's the location uh, of that. And then here, when you lift this, is your two fuse panels. So if if ever there was a situation that something didn't work on your helm, this would be where you would where you would work. Look, I mean. Um, in the back of the boat, we on uh, again. This is an LE, so in this back compartment is is our battery. Um, if and this is your main breaker. So if you had no battery power, this, this could be potentially out. You could reset this. And that's, your, that, that's like the main breaker of, of like your home. Um, also here is just, just for your reference, this is our power assisted steering pump. The... Um, all doors have magnetic uh, holders, so when you're boarding the boat, you don't have the wind bouncing those uh, back and forth. Um, seats, both, both seats are adjustable front to back, and they also can swivel. They, um, that adjustment is done with this bottom lever right here. So one way it'll swivel, one way 
if you rotate this, this piece here, which you can pull out first, if you rotate it the other way, it'll allow it to, to move forward and back. Uh, just, a, just a side note, when we get to the cover video, um, the cover was, was fit with these in a tilted position, so we will, we'll have both of these tilted down. Another interior light that has a switch here, but again, the uh, master power will also shut that off. On this boat, it's equipped with a changing room here. And you, you simply flip this up. The, the curtain, the curtain would be installed on this hoop. And we set this in place here with the curtain on it and you have yourself a temporary uh, uh, changing room. The boats with rear the boats with rear loungers you lift up the rear pad similar to the one that you see now you can you can lift up that pad and then your changing room is in in that compartment so on your on your uh, 250 DL3 and your 250 and 230 LE sports your changing room would be in that rear lounger. Um, all uh, Regencies come with two of these drink holders. There's a Velcro strip here, so you simply can position it on any seat anywhere in the boat, depending on where you need additional cup holders. Uh, patented by uh, Regency and Sun Tracker. Um, we also have our um, Stormore seating, so these seat backs lift up. They have an optional cooler that'll Once fit in. Once your, uh, your hood is, has been removed, then the process in checking the oil, which is outlined in your owner's manual, is first we need to uh, lift the motor into a horizontal position. So as far as it'll go up, we leave it sit for about three minutes and then bring it back down to its normal operating position. And then at this point, we can pull out the dipstick and on the dipstick we have a low level and a high level we need to be between this operating range other thing I like to point out on the motors is our fuses again I want you to know where every fuse is in this boat so the fuses are located here in a, in a uh, diagram of, of um, what they do is listed here if you had to add oil here's where we add oil And other than that, the, uh, the rest of the information will have tabbed in your owner's manual in terms of the required maintenance and winterization process that needs to be done. Starting with um, our um, surge brake tongue. So this, this um, um, does not require any electrical uh, addition. Of course, surge brakes compress and they, and they actually apply brakes on the trailer. Um, so the things you need to know about are when you do hook the trailer up, um, here's a safety pin that locks this latch down. So you put that through this hole and then this latch cannot be lifted. In the event that you had to back up a hill like into your shed or something like that, um, you, you would eventually apply the brakes. So um, to eliminate that from happening, you can see this hole here, you're able to slide this, this same pin in this place and that'll keep the brakes from actually activating. This, um, of course you have your safety chains here and then this smaller cable that I'm showing you right here is actually a safety uh, cable for the brakes in the event that the trailer come up. This would actually apply the brakes um, by pulling on this cable here on the side. Um, does require a two inch ball. Um, another, another thing I'd like to show you is of course our trailer winch strap um, hooks up to here that's what that hook is for and then this is designed this is supposed to be hooked up here and this is designed in the event that this cable broke or this winch strap broke this would then help secure the boat on Regency LEs and LE sports they come uh, standard with a spare tire and they also have a special um, theft proof uh, lug nut that so you would need to keep this with you to make sure that you're able to take the, uh, the tire off. 
as we um, progress to the back of the boat. Of course, it's a tandem axle trailer. The LE comes with aluminum wheels. The DL comes with steel, but they all have uh, greasable hubs. So we're able to remove this rubber cap and we're able to easily grease both of the axle bearings on uh, this trailer on all four tires. When we proceed to the back of the boat, um, we have transom straps here for transport. So these can be released by simply lifting this lever up and unhooking. And then of course we have our transom saver and it is, it is pinned to the trailer and this is designed to now set the motor on this and then you're able to hook this strap up, wrap it around the other side and hook to the hole on the other side. So this is, this is how it should be when you're trailering your boat to and from your, your I'd boat. I'd like to way. mention to all my customers is when launching this boat, we um, of course back in uh, to the point that the boat will float off the trailer. Um, that eliminates any damage to these carpeted bunks. When we go and load the boat, I always advise my customers to completely saturate the bunks in water and then pull back out so that about two to three foot of this bunk is showing. And that seems to be about the easiest uh, way to load the boat.